Hola clase, hoy vamos a hacer frase útiles. So today we're going to do useful phrases. A great way to learn any word language is just to use your phrases. Um, every time you see a native speaker or every opportunity you get to practice, by using small phrases, you're just going to reinforce the language that you know. So for example, I would use for lo pases bien anytime I left somebody lo pases bien so that means basically it translates to have a good day or pass it well so lo pases bien so even though I might have not understood how the grammar got there I would just use these phrases in building up um, a larger vocabulary and understanding for myself so we're going to work on those today pero primero vamos a practicar al geografía nosotros estamos Trabajando en el geografía y donde están países hispanohablantes. So we're working on geography and where Spanish-speaking countries are. So el pri en la primera foto, in the first photo, la primera foto, ¿qué país está en roja? Or ¿Qué país está rojo? Actualmente, so I... I'm going to start over with that sentence because I was going to say, like, what, where is this country? Which would be, donde esta, right? Anytime you're talking about location, you always use the verb estar. But I was trying to describe that the country is red. So that's a description. So we would say, el país es rojo, pero el país está en América del Sur. Okay, so I've given you plenty of time to research what country this is. ¿Cómo se llama? Venezuela. ¿Y la capital de Venezuela? Caracas. Muy bien. Okay, en la segunda foto, en la segunda foto, aquí, el país amarillo, ¿cómo se llama? Panamá. ¿Y la capital de Panamá? Es muy fácil. La ciudad de Panamá. Muy bien. Ok. La tercera foto. La tercera foto. The third photo. Estamos en el centro, más o menos, de América del Sur. Exacto. Paraguay. ¿Y la capital de Paraguay? Asunción. Muy bien. Ahora vamos a practicar... Vexilología. Nosotros estamos practicando las banderas y de dónde son las banderas. La primera bandera, the first flag, la primera bandera. De dónde es la primera bandera? Where is the first flag from? Tiene las rayas rojos y blanca. Está en América, no, América del Sur, Perú. Muy bien. La segunda foto es el pájaro muy famoso, la Cazal. Exacto, Guatemala. ¿Y qué es la capital de Guatemala? La ciudad de Guatemala. Muy bien. Y en la tercera foto, en la tercera foto, ¿qué bandera? Es una isla en el Caribe. La capital es Santo Domingo. Exacto. La República Dominicana. Domini. Falta un. Y aquí, Dominicana. Muy bien. Perú, Guatemala y la República Dominicana. Ok, so hoy vamos a comenzar con la lección. Primero vamos a hacer frases de intereses, pasatiempos y trabajos. So I'm going to give you guys some phrases and then I'm going to go off on some grammar tangents. But these are good ones for any conversación, any conversation you're going to have with una persona um, Usually it has to do with your interests, your work, what you do. That's usually um, a big part of conversation, especially if you're just meeting someone for the first time. So most of these are in the informal. You can always change them if you would prefer to be more formal. So our first pregunta or frase, ¿Qué te gusta hacer? ¿Qué te gusta hacer? 
Yo me gusta hacer el yoga, me gusta hacer proyectos creativos. I like to do yoga and I like to do creative projects. So la pregunta es, ¿qué te gusta hacer? What do you like to do? Una posibilidad a responder, a possibility in responding to this. Mi pasatiempo favorito es yoga. Mi pasatiempo favorito es leer los libros. Mi pasatiempo favorito es nadar en la piscina. So my favorite pastime is. Also, you could say me gusta, right? So that's what we have next. Me gusta, no me gusta. Es una frase muy importante y fácil. That's an important, simple phrase to tell somebody that you like and don't like something. If you want to put a little more emphasis, instead of saying I like and you want to say I love, me encanta or no me encanta. So, ¿qué te gusta hacer? Me gusta estudiar español y francés. Me encanta viajar. I love to travel. Me encanta viajar. ¿En qué trabajas? ¿En qué trabajas? Bueno, yo soy profesora de lenguajes extranjeras. What do you do? Yo soy profesora de lenguajes extranjeras. I am a professor of foreign languages. ¿Te gusta tu trabajo? Ay, bueno, me encanta mi trabajo. Me encanta español y francés. Es muy divertido. So do you like your job? So these are all really easy sentences, beginning sentences to start conversaciones. One of the first things you have to do before asking these questions, though, is just rip off that band-aid um, and let your fears go, right? The more courage you have when speaking a foreign language, the more success you're going to have. So you would answer this question by saying, trabajo en, is una posibilidad, I work in, trabajo en educación. Yo soy profesora. So, of course, there's more than one opción to answer these preguntas, but this is a really great base for you. So, right now, this is, I'm going to go off on my tangent so we can remember um, how to conjugate verbs like gustar. So, I showed you me gusta, no me gusta. What's unique about this verb is that it can only be conjugated two ways. So, you have me gusta, me gustan. And it has to do with whether the object you like is singular or plural. But gustar isn't the only verb that does that. So I'm just going to show you an example as I conjugate. If I continued with gusta, it would be the same. It would be te gusta, te gustan. But I wanted to show you otros verbos como gustar. I wanted to show you other verbs like gustar. Te encanta, te encantan. It's not going to be any other way. Le interesa, le interesan, right? This is the singular. Le interesan is the plural. Le importa, le importan. Nos molesta, nos molestan. So, le interesa, does it interest her? Does it interest him? If I said me interesa, me interesa mucho español. Spanish really interests me. ¿Qué te importa? What's important to you? Me importa mi familia. Right, so these are what this means. What's important to you? Le importa sus estudios. Her, her studies are important to her. Molestar means to annoy. So I would say, um, la tarea nos molesta mucho. Or la tarea de matemáticas nos molesta mucho. So um, math homework really bothers us. Mi hermano nos molesta mucho. My brother really bothers us. So that's where molestar comes from. Vosotros, vos falta, vos falta la cuchara. You are missing the spoon. So if you're missing something, if I said me falta la tarea, I don't have my homework. I'm missing my homework. So that's what faltar means, to lack or to miss. Ellos les fascina, les fascinan. Uh, a los estudiantes les fascina mucho la cultura. Culture fascinates the students. So, and the last one I have, preocupa, les preocupa, los estudiantes les preocupa mucho de la tarea. The students worry about the homework. So these are verbs like gustar. 
and they're only conjugated based on whether the object you like is singular or the object you like is plural. So to really try to point this out for you, aea, so what form would agree with aea? We have me, te, le, nos, vos, les. Le, exacto. So here we have a, which is a personal a. It does not exist in English, so it's un poco difícil explicar, but because we don't know gustar, the le could be he, she, usted. Because we don't know who le is, to clarify, we would say a ella, right? So a ella, le, okay, so the verb is gustar, to run. So correr, that's just singular, so would you use gusta or gustan? Exacto. Muy bien. So I would say a ella le gusta correr. You also could just say le gusta correr because it's already been inferred that we said a ella, but I just like to repeat it to show you who we're talking about. So le gusta correr would also be correct. But in the third person singular and plural, sometimes you have to clarify because that le could be she, he, or usted. Okay, so we'll do another example. A mí. So a mí would agree with me. Tacos. Los tacos. Is that singular or plural? It's plural. Exacto. So I would say a mí me gustan los tacos picantes. I like spicy tacos. Can I say me gustan los tacos picantes? Absolutely. A mí is just to reinforce who we are talking about, okay? So that goes with anything, with all those verbs I just showed you, whether it's singular or plural, that's how you have to change and conjugate your verb. Okay, so back to our phrases. So these ones are questions. Um, ¿Cuánto cuesta? How much? Muchas veces cuando está viajando en los países de América del Sur y América Central, México, necesitan regatar. So you're going to need to bargain. So a lot of times you have to ask cuánto cuesta, and that also changes depending, the cuánto can change depending on what you're talking about. So if there's more than one, you would say cuántos cuestan. If it was feminine, you would say cuántas cuestan. So I'm not going to get into that too much, but just be aware of that as well. So anytime you're bargaining, cuánto cuesta, or in a shop, this is a great question to have. ¿Qué hora es? What time is it? I'll go on a little lesson after I give you guys these phrases. ¿Sabes qué pasa? ¿Sabes qué pasa? So remember, saber, sabes comes from the verb saber, which means to know information. So do you know what's happening? Yo no sé. I don't know. So remember, saber in the yo form is irregular. So it would be yo no sé. I don't know. Or sé. S-E con un acento. Okay? It's not sabo. Sometimes we um, like to do that. ¿Me puede ayudar con esto? This is a great one. Can you help me with this? ¿Me puede ayudar con esto? Can you help me with this? Anytime at your restaurant, or maybe you're just sitting around, ¿Puedes traerme una cerveza, por favor? ¿Puedes traerme una margarita, por favor? Can you bring me? So these are frases útiles. Muy bien. Um, ¿Puedo entrar? If you're not sure if you're able to come in or if it's open or you're being extra polite and careful, ¿Puedo entrar? Can I enter? ¿Quieres tomar una copa? Do you want to get a drink? Generally, copa refers to an alcoholic drink, um, but it doesn't have to be per se. And the last one, ¿Estás listo? ¿Estás listo a comenzar la lesión? Are you ready to start the lesson? So anytime you have the verb a star with listo, it means to be ready. But if I have the verb ser with listo, that means to be clever. So estoy lista means I'm ready to go. Soy lista means I'm clever. So the a star and ser changes the definition of some of our adjectives. So make sure you are aware of that. All right, so vamos a hacer una lesión muy rápida en qué hora es. So remember when you're doing time, one o'clock is the only singular hour. So you would say, es la una. Cada hora después de una es plural. Entonces son las dos, son las tres, son las cuatro, son las cinco. Solamente one o'clock 
S es la una, okay? Um, the following can also start. Besides son las dos, son las tres, there are two ways that you can say noon and there's two ways that you can say midnight. Es mediodía, son las doce de la tarde. So this one you also can use es, es mediodía, if you want to say noon. Son las doce de la tarde means it's 12 in the afternoon. Recuerdas como se dice midnight? Mediodía is midday, so media noche would be midnight, as media noche. Son las doce de la noche. So it's 12 at night, or as media noche. So there's three opportunities you use as when you're doing time. One o'clock, as la una, noon, as mediodía, midnight, as media noche. Okay, so... You use cuarto to indicate quarter past, media to indicate half past. You absolutely can say quince for 15 or treinta for 30. They're just preferences, so es la una y cuarto, or es la una y quince, son las dos y media, or son las dos y treinta. So to add minutes, you just use that Y. So es la una y cuarto. Okay, so just a really quick review. So if you're doing it the other way, this is where it's un poco más complicado to indicate time that is approaching the hour. So 2.55, I'm going to round up to 3 o'clock. So son las tres. It's five minutes to 3 o'clock. Son las tres menos cinco. So I round up to the next hour, then I subtract how many minutes it is to that next hour. So um, 11.50, we round up to the next hour. Son las doce. How many minutes is it to 12? Menos diez. Exacto. Muy bien. Una más. Son las tres y cua cuarenta y cinco. So there's two ways you can do it. I just gave you the one way. Son las tres y cuarenta y cinco. Or you can round up to the next hour. Son las cuatro. Menos cuarto. Or quince. Okay, so just a quick refresher on time. To find out at what time something happens, use a qué hora. So a qué hora es la clase de español. A las doce y media. So if someone, you want to know at what time something is. A qué hora. And you answer by saying a las doce. At 12 o'clock. To find out what time something, what time it is. Okay, use qué hora es. Qué hora es. Son las nueve. Okay, so a qué hora to find out at what time, qué hora es to find out what time it is. Okay, so andiamo. We're going to continue on. So exclamations, celebrations, and well wishes. Cuanti, cuánto tiempo sin verlo? Cuánto tiempo sin verla? Long time no see. Buena suerte. These ones are very easy to remember and use at any time. Um, I even use them with people that don't speak Spanish, and that's okay. Um, you can help other people understand small phrases as well as you practice them. This is a good one if you're feeling uncomfortable, you don't like something, alto, or you need somebody, a cab to stop, alto. Salud, you use this when you're cheering um, with your class, or you can do it when somebody sneezes. Anytime somebody sneezes in Spanish, you say salud. Buen provecho. Normalmente dice buen provecho antes de cena, antes de almuerzo, antes de desayuno. Basicamente es buen apetit. No hay una palabra en inglés por eso. There's not really a word in English for this except eat well or have a nice meal. I would probably use bon appetit um, to describe what one provecho is because I think that's pretty pretty um, common in our cultura. Okay, so cuídate. So anytime someone's leaving, cuídate, cuídase. So the cuídate is the informal, cuídase is the formal. Take care. Felicitaciones. Someone shares good news with you. Felicitaciones. It's someone's birthday. Felicitaciones. You passed your Spanish exam. Felicitaciones. Muy bien. Um, another phrase, muy popular, genio, which means genius, genio. Genial. Genial means great or awesome. Y también depende las exclamaciones cambia depende en el país. 
Por ejemplo, increíble can mean cool, incredible. Chulo means cool. Guay means cool. But chulo is used in Mexico and guay is used in Spain. So muchas cosas cambia por lo menos, depending on where you're going. Um, exclamations can change. Ah, so I love this next part, uh, filler words and phrases, and you'll really see this a lot um, with different Spanish speakers. So, a ver, let's see, a ver. Um, this next one is really common with people who are from Spain. Pues, vamos a la cine, ¿no? ¿Quieres ir conmigo al restaurante? Pues, no sé, tengo clase. It's a way to fill, and it also means well, but pues... Um, maybe now that I've pointed out, you'll be able to hear it and notify it. I can usually tell where somebody's from by these fillers. Bueno is the same thing. Um, ¿Quieres ir al almuerzo conmigo? Um, bueno, es que tengo que trabajar. Well, I have to work. You know, so these are good fillers. ¿Sabes? Ay, Dios mío, ¿sabes que tu profesora es loca? Oh my gosh, do you know? Do you know that your professor's crazy? And we just did. I know. I don't know. Si, sí, yo sé. No, no lo sé. Pero, but. So sometimes when you're looking for a word um, still in Spanish, you can fill it in and be like, pues, mm, no sé. Um, de verdad? Tienes un examen hoy. De verdad? Really means really. I just use this one. Ay, Dios mío, tu profesora es loca. Oh my God, Dios mío. Entonces, me gusta mucho. I use this one a lot. Entonces means so. Hace mal tiempo hoy. Entonces voy a conducir con cuidado. It is bad weather today, so I'm going to drive carefully. Así que also means so. I don't use this one as much, but it's different di dialects, depends on where people are. Entonces is something I use more often. Por supuesto, I use this one mucho. Por supuesto means of course. So these are just some filler words and frases que son muy útiles. Okay, so helpful phrases. Necesito ayuda. I need help. Llámame cuando llegues. Call me when you arrive. Me voy a casa. Me voy a clase. So me voy in general is just a good one. So that means I'm taking myself. I'm leaving. I'm going home. Me voy a trabajo. I'm going to work. Necesito ir a. I need to go to. So you would fill it in. Necesito ir a mi clase. Necesito ir a mi trabajo. Necesito ir a visitar mi abuela. So this is, I need to go to do something. No tengo idea. No tengo idea. So someone says, ¿A qué hora es tu clase de español? My answer, no, tenga, no tengo idea. I don't know. I don't have a clue. ¿Lo entiendes? Do you understand? No entiendo. I don't understand. So that's a good one. No entiendo. Otra vez. Again, can you repeat it? Quiero. I want. Quiero, por favor. Make sure you add the por favor so you're not too demanding. Puede hablar más despacio, por favor? So this sentence would be good. No entiendo. Puede hablar más despacio, por favor? I don't understand. Can you speak slower, please? One of the most challenging parts in Spanish is that no matter where you go to travel to speak this, you are going to have a, ver a variety of um, speakers speaking to you. So someone might speak very quickly like I do in English. Someone might have a lisp. Somebody might have a different dialect. And so it can get very confusing. Um, so it's really helpful if you ask that speaker, ¿Puede hablar más despacio, por favor? Or no entiendo. Gracias. Um, okay, so, ¿Cómo llego hasta allí? This is good if you don't know direcciones, estás perdido when you're lost. Estoy perdido, ¿Cómo llego hasta allí? I'm lost. How do I get there? Also, I use the word, um, ¿Puedes ayudarme con las direcciones? Can you help me with directions is something I also say. 
So, oh, I'm going to skip past these so you guys can see the ones I did. So these are just, oh, I did the opposite. So put in your batteries. Uh, ponte las pilas. These are funny phrases that are used in Spanish that we don't have in English. So ponte las pilas, that means look alive, put in your batteries. Ponte las pilas. So pilas actually literally means um, batteries. Ponte means to put in. That would be a, a informal command. Buena onda. So these are just um, popular um, just phrases, I guess. Buena onda which means good wave, literally good wave, but it means like good vibes. La profesora tiene buena onda. La clase de, de español es buena onda, right? It has good vibes, buena onda. Hablando del rey de Roma. So let's say you were talking about me and all of a sudden yo entro la clase, enter the classroom. You would say, hablando del rey de Roma, speaking of the king of Rome, Es muy similar a la frase en inglés que nosotros decimos, um, speaking of the devil, right? So literally meaning talking about the king of Rome. Talk about someone when they suddenly appear. Estamos hablando de Julio y justo entra por la puerta hablando del rey de Roma. Meter la pata. So we all do this sometimes. Meter la pata means to put your foot in your mouth. So this literally means to put your paw in your mouth. And so that means you just made a mistake or maybe said something that you shouldn't have. So meter la pata. Y por fin, mala leche. So mala leche es una persona con mal intenciones. So just like spoiled milk, it's someone with bad intentions. Okay, so nosotros aprendimos mucho hoy. We've learned so much, mucho vocabulario. So we definitely learned a lot of words today. Some you might be familiar with, but remember you need to hear and see a word seven times before your brain memorizes it. So vamos a practicar mucho y vamos a usar las frases útiles durante el semestre también. Okay, si ustedes tengan preguntas, make sure you email me. I'm happy to answer any questions or concerns you may have. Uh, lo, pase, lo pasen bien. Chao.